Hi guys and welcome back to another video. We're back here in the potting shed once again and today I want to talk to you about bromeliads. Now these guys are pretty cool little things. Actually you might have seen them in garden centers and DIY stores and things like that with the big tropical flower stems coming out the top. In fact they're not flowers. What you're actually seeing is the bracts of plants which are modified leaves, colored leaves. Actually the flowers are just a tiny little bit in the top of the plant themselves but they look pretty amazing. They're tropical plants and in this video I want to tell you a little bit about them and something that a lot of people get wrong and um, will actually be well worth knowing because when you think you've got a dead plant you don't necessarily have a dead plant. So I think a lot of people throw this away after they've seen it flower and they could be able to enjoy this plant for years and years to come. So uh, a little bit about the bromeliad. It's actually a member of the pineapple family, unbelievably, but you can almost tell that by the shape of the uh, flowers because they do have that kind of uh, same look as the top of a pineapple as well. A lot of people get this wrong because they will flower only once in their lives. Okay, so you usually buy one of these plants with a big amazing looking um, flower coming out the top and once that is finished it usually flowers for three to six months but once it's done the, uh, the main body of the plant actually dies. It only ever flowers once in its life so most people love it in the bin and that's it. They've had a bit of colour in their house and uh, that's it over and done with. But what actually happens if you keep them around, you can cut the flower stem off, which is what's happened with this one. That's what I've done, I've cut the flower stem off. And what actually happens, I don't know if you can see, I'll give you some close-ups in a minute, but you're gonna actually get what we call pups growing out the sides or offshoots. Uh, and that is actually new plants growing from the base of the plant and there are one, two, there are three new plants growing from this new one. So although the actual main plant does die after it finishes flowering, it sends out new, uh, new baby plants and there's three in this pot. So what you can do is either remove uh, these baby plants and put them in a separate pot uh, and grow them as individual plants once again. Or you can put it in a bigger pot and just let the let the new ones grow out and make it into a bigger multi-flowering pot. I was given these at the end of last year I reckon I don't know November December time and I've really enjoyed them flowering. They're two big uh, red uh, flowers on them amazing uh, and I've really enjoyed them but I've never had them uh, to keep on. So one of these plants I'm just going to leave in the pot like this and see what it looks like uh, when it grows out bigger with these three new pups on them and see how that looks. So that will be an interesting experiment. And then with this one, I'm actually, the slightly bigger pups on these ones are slightly more grown out. I think I'm gonna take these off and actually uh, see how they go as three individual plants. And I've got three of them, so we're gonna have a bit of fun with them as well and be a little bit more creative because this is actually what's known as an epiphyte. It's an epiphytic uh, plant, which is a cool name for something that grows on another living thing, like a tree, for example, like orchids. So they will attach themselves to the tree and grow up in the canopy sometimes, out on a, out on a branch, really interesting plants. So actually when you get them in pots, they don't really need the media that they're planted in. It's only really to, to root the plant to wherever it is. It gains um, its water and its nutrients from the air. So uh, if you can imagine in a tropical rainforest, it rains heavy and the water would actually go down into like a cup or reservoir in this plant and it holds it and takes its water from in there. And um, yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, plants. So what we're going to do when I take these apart, um, I'm actually going to play around with different ways to display them because they don't need to be in much media. So we'll have a, get a bit of a play with that in a different video. Um, but in this one, we're just going to uh, propagate it. So we're going to take these pups off 
uh, and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Um, and then, yeah, once these have developed a little bit uh, later and grown on a bit more uh, and start developing their own flowers, then uh, we can have a look at a few different ways of displaying them because I think they're really interesting plants. It may take a little while for them to become mature and flower. Um, it may be a few years. It might not be one uh, one season before they're ready to flower, uh, but we'll see. Um, I've never brought them on from pups before, so I'll keep you posted about how that is going on. But um, in the meantime, I still think they're interesting foliage plants, especially when you keep them together and they put out all this foliage as a you know an effect with lots of other plants. I still think they're attractive. And uh, so, yeah, this is what you can do if you have a bromeliad and uh, it is finished flowering. You don't have to throw it out. If you wait, uh, you will get these additional little pups growing from the base, which means you have new plants. So you don't have to go out and buy more. You will be able to grow new plants from this. So I think a lot of people get that wrong. The other thing that people uh, might do is overwater it because although they are a tropical plant and they do really like the humidity, so spraying them is a good idea. Lots of misting uh, with rainwater ideally or demineralized water. Um, if you can mist them on a regular basis, they'll really appreciate the humidity uh, and you can put them on a, a saucer with water underneath, you know, with stones in it, a humidity tray if you like. They will appreciate that. As the water evaporates, it creates a humid zone around the leaves of the plants and they will appreciate that as well. Um, but they don't really like to be standing in water. They're not designed for that. They're gripping onto other plants usually. And so any water that's around will run off or sit in this little reservoir. And talking of which, you don't want to put too much down into this either because if you put too much and it just sits there for too long it will rot the plant these are quite sensitive to rotting out they don't like to be sat in water and um, and they will rot the roots will rot and once the roots go the plant's going to die so yes uh, you can water the, the soil as you like uh, you can put a small amount of ideally demineralized or rainwater down into the plant as well. You wouldn't normally do that with most plants, but that's how these do take on water. So that's fine, uh, but just not too much. A little bit at a time is better. And wait until the soil dries out a bit as well. Maybe the first couple of, couple of inches in the pot, let it dry out a little bit before you water it again, because it just doesn't like to be soggy, you know? So make sure the potting media is free draining. Like orchids, like um, you can buy orchid bark, which is just, bark basically but they will enjoy that because it's really free draining and like I said they don't really the roots aren't there to take up nutrients so they don't need to be uh, in any particular nutrient rich compost so that um, is a good media to plant them in if you're going to but when you buy these usually they're already in a small pot and leaving them in that pot is absolutely fine unless you want to put it in an outer house plant pot to make it look even nicer but uh, yeah in terms of fertilization they don't really need any they're already flowering almost always when you buy them from a nursery or, or the grower has sent them to whatever shop is going to be selling them they've already got to the point of flowering uh, which means they don't really need any more nutrients in them and in any way even if you were to put them uh, put some plant fertilizer in the pot that's not how they get their nutrients they get the nutrients from the air because they are epiphytic so um, it wouldn't do much good anyway you can get these like orchid mists uh, sprays which do have uh, some nutrients in the spray and you could spray the leaves very occasionally with that if you've got some newer pups that you want to bring on and give some uh, nutrients to you could use that so let's get over to the potting bench and I will show you how to propagate one of these uh, bromeliads with, uh, by removing the pups and I'll put them in pots on their own to grow on. Alrighty, so we're over here at the bench and um, what I'm going to use to uh, cut these off is actually my good trusty asparagus knife and I use this for everything. It really is a handy knife. Um, it, it has like very tiny serrations. It's curved, 
uh, and a really nice grippy rubber handle as well. You can get down into plants and you can serrate them, you can cut bags open. They really are a multi-purpose uh, knife. It's stainless steel for around the garden and for using with uh, house plants. They are a very useful piece of kit. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to grab yourself a asparagus knife because they are just actually a handy multi-purpose gardening knife with that um, sort of tip as well you can get down into things pierce things um, stab things you know it is a really great knife and being stainless steel it's not going to rust and um, yeah it will last an awfully long time i really love this i've had it for ah oh, probably five years maybe even longer and it's still just as good as when i bought it new all righty so let's get some pots shall we Now, to begin with, I'm just going to be uh, planting these up into some general uh, potting compost just for something to put them in. When they grow on a little bit, I probably will put them in uh, some sort of uh, orchid bark, that type of potting media. I don't have any left at the moment. The whole corona thing has made uh, getting hold of things a lot harder at the moment. And I don't really want to go into some big garden centers at the moment unless I have to. So this will do for now. They're not even gonna have hardly any roots, if at all, to begin with. Uh, so just that media, just to hold it in there for the moment will be fine. And um, once they get established, I'll put them in a slightly better free draining mix. But I've got some grit sand in here that I can add to it as well, which helps with not, you know, holding on to the water. Because the one thing you want to make sure is that it doesn't hold on to too much water and uh, that it can drain freely. So I'm, I've just got one big pot here for the moment. I'm just going to get a, an amount of compost there. Now I've got some uh, RHS Gardener's Horticultural Grit Sand, which again is just some gritty sand, nothing particularly uh, special. Um, you could probably get this from um, a builder's yard or something like that, but this is kind of sterile and there's nothing nasty that's uh, um, going to be in it, which is quite handy and that doesn't cost very much anyway. So. All I'm doing is just adding a few handfuls into uh, into the potting mix and just giving it a, a wise round. And that's just going to open up the soil a bit and so make it a bit better free draining for these pups. So that's that. Now, ideally, we want to try and remove these without too much damage as possible but like I said they don't really need that much root to work so I'm just prying them slowly and carefully apart and they will come away with some of the mother's root with them so that's what I'm doing just pulling them back slowly there we go and they're slowly splitting away from the mother there we go There we are. I'm more or less splitting the, the root ball into three and the original mother there has still got some root. But now this is flowered, this is pretty much just gonna die. Uh, so you can keep that or you can throw it away. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And we've got a few here now. There's one more with a bit less and this one's got a whole clump of roots on it as well so pretty good this big leaf is just hanging off this one so I'm just going to use my knife to cut this off there we go, just to make it look a bit neater. I 
there we go just press it in a little bit and he's happy enough in there um, as I say it's got plenty of free draining soil for it at the moment it looks fairly happy and I'll probably just keep him in here for now there's a lot of light and a fairly stable temperature and um, yeah I'll pop the other three out I think this one I'll put in a slightly bigger pot because there's more roots with it so uh, let me find a slightly bigger pot good tip is to always keep your old pots because as long as you've got the room like in a shed like this you never know what size pot you might want for something and so when you keep them all you can go back and you can tailor the pot exactly to the size that you need which is handy so obviously you don't want thousands but I really think um, a few of a different size of, of everything is a very handy thing to have a lot of people just throw them out and then you're scratching around for something later There we go, that's that guy planted in another slightly bigger pot. I think I'll use another bigger one for this guy as well. So that's the last little guy so uh, these guys are going to grow on now and um, it may take a little while for them to flower but I'll keep you posted and I'm looking forward to seeing on how they progress and how they look and I think even as a foliage plant they can still look really nice so that's these little guys all done that's how you propagate a bromeliad and now we have three new plants to grow on and I'm looking forward to watching them progress and grow nice and big over the coming seasons I'll keep you posted and I'll let you know how these guys get on but uh, if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here as well it really does make a difference okay that's it thanks for watching and I will catch you very soon on another video